This evening, first, President Irfan Ali mandates new e-ticketing system on all highways to improve traffic management and reduce road violations. Learn how this cutting-edge technology aims to curb speeding and save lives. Next, a Georgian painter faces serious charges for exporting gold without a license. We'll bring you the details of the courtroom drama and ongoing investigations into his alleged gold smuggling operations. Then, the government proposes a structured salary increase for teachers, but negotiations with the Ghana Teachers Union remain tense. Find out where the talks stand and what's at stake for educators across the country. Also, low-income families in East Bank Demerara receive new core homes as part of a sustainable housing initiative. Hear from the grateful recipients and the government's plans for future housing projects. And finally, in Venezuela, presidential candidates hold their final rallies ahead of Sunday's election. Opposition leaders urge voters to oust President Nicolas Maduro while Maduro warns of dire consequences if the opposition wins. These stories and more coming up on tonight's broadcast. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for July 26, 2024. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, Ivan Anthony Scipio, a 52-year-old painter from Durban Street, Georgetown, was charged with the offense of exporting gold without a license when he appeared at the Diamond Magistrates Court on Thursday, July 25, 2024. Scipio appeared before Magistrate Judy Latchman, where the charge was read to him, and he pleaded not guilty. He was granted bail in the sum of $800,000, with the condition that he reported to the Special Organized Crime Unit the last Friday of every month. On July 3, 2024, detectives from the Criminal Investigation Department, along with officers from the Ghana Revenue Authority, seized several pieces of gold jewelry and raw gold from Scipio, who is a U.S. citizen, while he was attempting to leave Ghana on an outbound flight for New York, USA. This was after Scipio failed to make a customs declaration to customs officials and produce the necessary license to export gold legally. The gold has a value of over $6 million. Investigations reveal that Scipio had been allegedly involved in this racket for some time, since a link shows that he reportedly made several exports previously but was not caught. The case was adjourned to August 19, 2024. Investigations by Suko into possible money laundering are also ongoing. On a different note, President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali has mandated e-ticketing systems on new highways to improve traffic management and reduce violations. More from Dale Jarvis. In an effort to improve traffic management and reduce road violations, President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali has mandated the installation of e-ticketing systems on all new highways. During an inspection of roadworks on the East Bank of Demerara, President Ali emphasized the importance of integrating these systems in current infrastructure projects. E-ticketing systems will use cameras and advanced technology to monitor traffic, check speeds, read license plates, and track violations for efficient ticketing. This initiative follows the recent amendment of the Motor Vehicles and Road Traffic Act by the National Assembly, aimed at identifying drivers who violate speed limits and seatbelt laws. The Guyana Police Force will manage the new intelligent camera systems fitted onto traffic lights. These systems will capture photographs of offending vehicles and the photo and the fine notice will be sent to the vehicle owner's mobile phone and address. The initiative is expected to deter speeding significantly and other traffic violations, addressing the high number of road accident fatalities in recent years, including 175 deaths in 2023 alone. Reporting for Headline News Update, Dale Jervis. Thanks, Dale. The Ghana government has proposed a structured salary increase for teachers, offering a 7% raise for this year and an additional 6% increase for 2025 and 2026. This counter-proposal comes in response to the Ghana Teachers Union, which has requested a 39.5% increase for this year and a 30% raise for the following two years. Despite multiple meetings, an agreement has yet to be reached on the proposed salary adjustments. The discussions on Thursday address both salary and non-salary issues. Although some progress has been made on non-financial matters, salary increases remain a point of contention. The Ghana Teachers Union President Mark Light stated that while negotiations are ongoing and some areas have seen progress, both sides have agreed to keep the details of the discussions 
confidential for now. He emphasized optimism that an agreement could be finalized in the near future. In addition to salary increases, the union has proposed a 2% annual performance-based incentive, $25,000 annual health allowance, and $10,000 monthly mobile data allowance for teachers. The next meeting between the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Teachers Union is scheduled for August 5, 2024, as both parties continue to work towards a comprehensive agreement. Sikorongbun return. Five families receive co-homes from the Ministry of Housing and Water, and 300 children benefit from First Lady's Adopt an Orphanage initiative. Problem, Granny. I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Smart Minds Educational Institute Offering preschool, nursery and primary levels Finally a school that is every parent's dream Located at 69 Crow Street Offering academic excellence Trained qualified teachers Small class sizes Personalized gear And one-to-one -one attention for your little ones At Smart Minds Register for full-time or evening classes Daily practice pass exam papers For proficiency at the grade 2, 4 and 6 assessment And CXE exam preparedness Or join our Becca Phonics reading and writing program so if your child is for preschool nursery or primary level come to smart mind located at 69 street or call 231-4885 or 600 9229 to enroll now Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoo's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Welcome back. The Ministry of Housing and Water has handed over five new core homes to low-income families as part of its initiative to provide sustainable and affordable housing for all Guyanese. These homes, located in Great Diamond, Golden Grove and Farm on the East Bank of the Marara, were officially handed over by the Housing Minister Colin Kroll and Minister within the Ministry Susan Rodriguez. Recipients expressed immense gratitude for their new homes. Deborah Beth, who requires a walker, received a home in Great Diamond specifically designed for better mobility, featuring bathroom rails and other supportive equipment. Another recipient, a single mother, Arissa Richmond, shared her joy at finally having a stable home after years of moving between temporary accommodations. Minister Kroll urged patients from other beneficiaries still awaiting their homes, emphasizing the government's commitment to completing the project. Minister Rodriguez highlighted that over 900 home improvement subsidies have been selected, with 600 already distributed 
each valued at $750,000. Approximately 120 families have benefited from the Core Home Initiative, achieving homeowner status. In other news, approximately 300 children across nine orphanages are reaping the benefits of First Lady Aria Ali's Adopt an Orphanage Initiative. Now, in its third year, the Adopt an Orphanage Initiative, a testament to its long-term commitment, continues to alleviate financial burdens and provide essential resources for the development of orphans nationwide. For the third consecutive year, the initiative has secured sponsorship for nine orphanages, covering expenses such as utilities, repairs, maintenance, and transportation. The First Lady emphasized that the initiative is more than just financial support. It represents a commitment to making a difference and supporting children's dreams and achievements. She extended gratitude to the sponsors, including Embassy of the People's Republic of China, Demerara Bank Limited, Jay's Supermarket, Comfort Sleep, Sheriff Construction, Lucky Star, Premier Construction, and IB Construction for their generous contribution. Don't go away after the break. Police officer suspended after Manchester Airport video goes viral. And Typhoon Gaming hits Chinese seaboard as authorities warn of flash floods. Smart Minds Educational Institute, offering preschool, nursery, and primary levels. Finally, a school that is every parent's dream. Located at 69 Crow Street, offering academic excellence, trained, qualified teachers, small class sizes, personalized gear, and one-to-one -one attention for your little ones. At Smart Minds, register for full-time or evening classes, daily practice pass exam papers for proficiency at the grade 2, 4, and 6 assessment, and CXE exam preparedness. Or join our Becca Phonics Read and writing program. So if your child is for preschool, nursery, or primary level, come to Smart Mind located at 69 Crow Street or call 231 4885 or 600 9229 to enroll now. Good, good girl, forget things. Good. Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. The British Virgin Islands Department of Immigration apprehended 20 Haitians in North South, Virgin Gorda, highlighting human smuggling concerns. The group, including 12 men, 7 women, and 3 children, was moved to Tortola with help from the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. Acting Chief Immigration Officer Nadia Demin Hodge called for community assistance in addressing these smuggling activities, which stem from severe economic and social hardships in Haiti. 
Meanwhile, presidential candidates in Venezuela held their final campaign rallies on Sunday before the election. Opposition leaders are asking voters to oust President Nicolas Maduro, who is seeking a third term. But Maduro has warned the country's risk of bloodbath if the opposition wins. Al Jazeera's Alexandria Rampietti reports. A final appeal for a new era in Venezuela. Presidential candidate and former diplomat Edmundo González, together with the driving force behind his candidacy, Maria Corina Machado, called for a massive vote on Sunday to unseat President Nicolás Maduro. That's why we need everyone to get active very early in the morning. I ask you a question. Who defends your vote? You! Their last event in the capital Caracas came at the end of a tumultuous campaign that rallied the most significant voter mobilization since the late President Hugo Chavez. The opposition and international observers say the government has tried to derail the campaign using irregular tactics. Maduro's government barred Machado from running, denied 4.5 million Venezuelans living abroad from registering to vote, and excluded opposition candidates from appearing on television. Leftist governments like Colombia and Brazil withdrew their delegations meant to observe the elections, saying Maduro's government was not respecting the democratic process. The U.S. government insisted on the need for competitive and inclusive elections. We support the peaceful elections that we expect and hope will come on Sunday. Elections that will reflect the will and the aspirations of the Venezuelan people for a more democratic, stable and prosperous future. Any political rep rep repression and violence is unacceptable. Maduro's supporters also took to the streets of downtown Caracas for a final rally, brought there in large numbers on government-hired buses. The president, who has been in power since 2013, appealed for a third term. We will not allow them to continue causing damage. Their time is up. If they make this mistake, they will regret it for 200 years. It will be the last mistake they make in their political life. There will be an iron hand and justice against the fascists and rioters. Maduro says Venezuela has the world's most transparent electoral system, but has warned the country risks a bloodbath if the opposition wins. Recently, the government has curbed the country's sky-high inflation, but enduring sanctions has slashed its oil income and the economy remains in crisis. More than 7 million Venezuelans have fled the country's economic collapse in past years, and many more are considering doing the same depending on Sunday's results. Alessandro Ampietti, Al Jazeera. Internationally, the condition of the man who was kicked in the head by a police officer at Manchester Airport has deteriorated, according to his lawyer. The incident is currently under investigation by the independent police watchdog. Police reported responding to an assault, but acknowledged that the level of force used during the arrest was unusual. Al Jazeera's Manila Veselnovic reports a warning, the pictures you're about to see are distressing. To gasps from onlookers, a police officer kicks a man in the head as he lies face down on the ground. Stop kicking people! Bystanders film in shock. As this chaotic scene unfolded at Manchester Airport on Tuesday night, police say they were responding to reports of an assault and that three of their officers were injured in the altercation, requiring hospital treatment, one with a broken nose. But the violent arrest, captured on video, has sent shockwaves across the nation. Well, I have seen the footage, and for that reason, I do understand the public concern. Um, obviously, action has now been taken in relation to the suspension of an officer, uh, and uh, the Home Secretary is already having those discussions with the Mayor of Manchester. Um, I think they've already happened or they've, they're taking place as we speak and she has made sure that she's kept updated on developments um, ever since the incident. So I'm with Ahmad and Fahid here. They were released not long ago from Cheadle Police Station. The men who are in the video are here with their lawyer who says they have lost faith in Greater Manchester Police or GMP. 
Uh, right now, the main concern is uh, for their health. Um, they are very traumatized by this experience. They are the family members of a serving police officer in Greater Manchester Police. So they were quite uh, shocked by what's happened. GMP says four people have been arrested at the scene for a fray and assault on emergency service workers. But the level of force used in the arrest is now investigated by the independent police watchdog. Greater Manchester Police called the video truly shocking and said that the use of such force in an arrest is unusual and that they understood why it caused alarm. But in an earlier statement, they said that there was a clear risk of firearms being snatched from officers who were carrying weapons. But there was anger on the streets of Manchester on Thursday night. People here demanding more accountability from the police. And many in the community are now appealing for calm. Milena Vesilinovic, Al Jazeera, Manchester. Finally, Typhoon Gemi has reached southeastern China after churning across the Taiwan Strait. The typhoon has prompted warning of swelling rivers, flash floods, and water logging in cities and provinces that were hit by extreme rains several weeks ago. Al Jazeera's Laura Westbrook reports. Packing winds equivalent to a Category 4 hurricane, the destruction wrought by Typhoon Gami was particularly felt in northeastern Taiwan. Restaurant owner Li Li Chuan says she will have to replace her entire roof. The roof fell and the water pipes burst. I'm on the verge of crying now. I'm going to have to spend a lot of money, and I'm afraid the roof will fall and hit someone. The storm brought extreme amounts of rain that set off flooding in many parts of the island. Schools, offices and financial markets closed for a second day. It also grounded hundreds of flights, throwing travel plans in disarray. I think so the government has to take care of about all these things. They have to be published on social media because we are here for the business purpose. Okay? And they didn't inform us about that, ki this is going to be happen. So we cannot plan the program. No? Meanwhile, preparations in China's southeastern provinces of Fujian and Zhejiang began long before Gaimi made landfall. More than 150,000 people were moved from coastal areas. Fishing boats were ordered back to harbor, while ferries, trains and flights were cancelled. Cities along China's coast are often struck by typhoons and emergency responses are in place in preparation for strong winds, storm surges and torrential rain. Authorities in Fujian have helicopters and ships on standby to handle any maritime emergencies. Forecasters expect the storm to bring heavy rain with it as the typhoon tracks north, raising the risk of more flooding. While downpours continued to batter the north of the country, including the capital Beijing, two national highways were blocked by mudslides and flooding. The heavy rain is expected to last a week. That will pile more pressure on a region that has already seen record levels of rain this year. Laura Westbrook, Al Jazeera, Hong Kong. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next, the 3D weather forecast.
and the Safe TV2 headline news for this Friday evening. As we take early, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. We will be off for the weekend, but you can tune in on Monday at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other and do have a wonderful weekend.